Today, we're diving into a stock that could change the game for your portfolio. But first, let me ask you this. What if I told you there is a company out there that's quietly revolutionizing the way business and governments operate? A company that's not just riding the AI wave, but is fundamentally transforming it. Intrigued? Because you should be. Because, of course, we're talking about Palantir. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss this. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Felix, your guide to the world of investing. And this is Winston, my adopted golden retriever, who, believe it or not, has sniffed out some incredible research for today's video. He's also sniffed out how we are up 60% already on our teaching portfolio this year. If you want to know how we do that, I'm hosting an exclusive free live webinar where Winston will share our trading strategies, our three-step system that's helped us achieve these returns. But hurry. Seats will run out. Head over to felixrenzelok slash webinar. Link is down below in the description. Now let's talk about Palantir here. This isn't just another AI company. Palantir has a secret weapon that's setting it apart from the rest. But before we get into that, let's understand what actually makes Palantir unique. Palantir's core strength lies in its ontology. Now I know what you're thinking. On Ontology sounds like something out of a philosophy class or some sort of birds watching program. But in the world of data, it is a game changer. An ontology is essentially a highly organized set of data that maps relationships between different pieces of information. Imagine having a digital twin of your entire organization where every action and decision is mirrored in real time. This is what Palantir offers. Palantir's foundry platform is the heart of this operation. It takes all the disorganized data from various sources, databases, PDFs, emails, and so on, and it integrates them into a single coherent system. This isn't just about storing data. It's about creating a continuous feedback loop where the system learns and adapts over time. Let's break it down with an example. Simple example, imagine a restaurant that sells chicken and salad. They usually stock the same amount of both items, but with Palantir's foundry, they can analyze sales data and discover that salads sell twice as much on Fridays. The system then recommends running a chicken discount on Fridays to boost sales. This continuous learning and adaptation is what sets Palantir apart, now, of course. Now imagine a business which has a million components and a million different items in inventory and 48 countries and 300 warehouses and 200,000 employees. That's really where it gets interesting. Although the chicken business would probably do quite well from it too. Now, here's where it gets even more exciting. Palantir's AI platform, AIP, isn't just another chatboard or a predictive model. It's like a football coach on the field making real-time decisions based on a deep understanding of the game. It leverages the ontology to provide actionable insights that can transform the business. Since the launch of AIP, Palantir stock has seen significant growth. But here's the twist. Most investors don't fully understand the value of Palantir's products. They're just jumping on the AI hype. But you, I savvy viewer, have an inside scoop. But it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Palantir has faced some challenges. Analysts have raised concerns about its high valuation and lack of visibility into its business. Mitsuho recently downgraded the stock, citing these issues. However, the stock has remained resilient, bouncing back quickly. One of the key strengths of Palantir is its diversified revenue streams. Initially, Palantir was heavily reliant on the US government for contracts, but now about half of its revenue comes from the private sector. This diversification is crucial for long-term growth. So what's the verdict? Despite the challenges, Palantir's unique approach to AI and data integration makes it a compelling investment in my opinion. And with institutional investors like BlackRock increasing their ownership gradually every single quarter, the future looks pretty promising. But let's dive deeper into Palantir's recent performance. On May 6th, Palantir announced 
their Q1 earnings, and the numbers were quite impressive. They generated $634 million in revenue in that first quarter, a 21% increase over the prior year, and significantly surpassing the upper end of guidance. In addition, they earned $106 million in profit, the largest quarterly profit in the company's 20-year history. For comparison, they now earn more profit in a single quarter than the amount of revenue that generated an entire year a little more than a decade ago. And the biggest investors in the world are starting to pay attention. Institutions are starting to buy up Palantir share. BlackRock is now the second largest shareholder after Vanguard. They are adding to it quarter by quarter. To find out why, well, just go and read Alex Karp's latest letters to shareholder. He says, our central insight and most foundational commitment is that the software products we're building, their strength and sophistication must remain at the center of our entire company. We've been investing in and refining our enterprise software platforms for years, and a growing portion of the American corporate sector is now coming to us more aware than ever of how significant AI and large language models will be in reshaping the industries within which they operate. Further, in the first quarter alone, Palantir conducted more than 660 boot camps, with organizations across industries and sectors providing potential partners with an opportunity to test and begin building on these platforms. These enterprises cannot wait for custom solutions to be built, and they are unwilling to invest in software systems that might work someday down the road. They need results now. And Palantir believes that they have the only platform that actually works. Their revenue last quarter is a reflection of this growing demand. And in that last quarter, they generated $150 million in revenue in U.S. commercial market alone. That is a 40% increase from the same period a year before. And they now expect revenue in their U.S. commercial business to grow 45% or more in this year. Palantir's intention is to make their artificial intelligence platform, AIP, the most dominant infrastructure in the market in power the effective deployment of AI in large language models across institutions. To that end, they're working to make AIP available to an even broader range of organizations in the markets that they serve, including businesses across the United States and abroad, state and local governments, as well as research scientists and academic institutions. Warfare in this century will continue to be transformed by software. Many fear the application of AI in the military context, including its potential to make possible more autonomous, indeed self-directed weapon systems. It has been less fashionable, however, to note that software, including the systems that are currently enabling target selection and mission planning, have become a vital part in the elimination of an adversary as it is protecting the innocent from harm. The platforms in use by Palantir's defense and intelligence partners present a very, very real threat to the survival of the enemies. But those same software systems may also make possible and indeed hasten the beginning of the end of an era of total and indiscriminate war. So what's the verdict? Well, despite the challenges, Palantir's unique approach to AI and data integration in my opinion, makes it a very compelling investment. And with institutional investors like BlackRock increasing their ownership, the future does look promising. In my opinion, the likely change of leadership in the US will bring about an acceleration of government expenditure and upgrading of the systems and infrastructure and software, as well as a shift from traditional military expenditure on, on weapon systems to software solutions and drones and autonomous things. And therefore, in my opinion, Palantir is very, very well placed to benefit from it. Now, is the stock cheap? No, of course it's not. But great companies rarely are. I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, share it with somebody who might enjoy it too. And I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday live at felixfriends.org slash webinar. Today, we're diving into one of the most talked about stocks of the year, DJT. Is it worth the hype or is it just another flash in the pan? Is it the next AMC or GME or maybe even a real business? I think I just offended most of the AMC and GME viewers, didn't I? Anyway, stick around because by the end,